Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I want to do today is I want to talk to you a little bit about compasses. One of the questions that I get more than just about any other is, hey, I'm getting ready to buy a new compass. What kind of compass should I buy? Or, hey, I'm getting ready to come to your school. Which compass should I bring? And the one thing that I'll tell you about compasses is going into this is that compasses probably are the one item that I would tell you, you definitely 99% of the time are gonna get what you pay for. If you buy a junk compass, you're gonna get a junk compass. If you buy a good compass, you're gonna get a good compass. Now you can get a good compass for less than $100. You can get a phenomenal compass for $300. Or you can go and buy a crappy compass for 10 or $15, and that's probably all it's gonna be worth to you. But I'm gonna show you some different compasses today. We're gonna to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of compasses. And then I'm gonna tell you what I would recommend for someone going into this as a new person that was learning bushcraft, trail craft, learning to navigate and things like that on their own, learning self-mapping, or someone who's coming to a basic class to begin their journey in land navigation. Or someone who has experience with land navigation but needs to buy a new compass or is in the market for a new compass we're going to talk about all of those things today. Stay with me. Okay, so let's take these compasses, one type of compass basically at a time. And we'll start with the most complex compass, but also the most accurate compass. And that would be what's called the pocket transit. The civilian version of a pocket transit made by Brunton is not dissimilar in any way to the military version of the M2 artillery compass or the compass that's used by civil engineers and things like that, land surveyors and those type people. All of those kind of people use that type compass. Now, there's a little bit of complication to this compass in comparison to anything that you've probably used before because everything is pretty much backwards. When you face this compass like you would with the mirror up, like most people would look at that compass, the north is going to be facing the opposite direction. It's going to be 180 degrees out. It's made that way on purpose because it's meant to line up or peep from the opposite side. It's made to be used this way, and that gives you a reading that gives you the north needle in the correct location of the compass. If you turn it around, it's going to be 180 degrees different. So you just have to learn that if you're going to use that compass in the forward method, that you've got to look at the south side of the needle and that's going to be your travel bearing. And that can be a little confusing. The advantage to a compass like this is, and the civilian version comes with 360 degrees on the bezel on the inside, and it's not a moving bezel ring, okay? That's another complication to this compass is, if you're gonna to try to follow a bearing, instead of being able to dial that bearing in and then just move until the needle's in a doghouse type of thing, you pretty much gotta just move your body around until that needle gets to the right degree reading on the bezel ring. It's not that big of a deal. Um, the other problem is if you're trying to shoot a bearing with this thing, it's a little bit more difficult to see what you're doing unless you're used to seeing this thing opposite because if you put the mirror down to look at it in the mirror through the siding window, everything is gonna be 180 degrees different on this thing as far as where the needle points because in a transit mode, it's meant to be used like this. It does have a clinometer on it that will allow you to track angles up and down, slope and pitch. The main reason a compass like this is an advantage to anyone is if you are a land surveyor, if you're trying to create an accurate map, they use them in the military, obviously for artillery and things like that, that have to be precise and the military version is in mils, it's not in degrees. It's in mils around the compass rosette. So it's different than the civilian version, but the operation is the same. And it does have the clinometer on it as well. It does have adjustable declination, unlike the next custom compass we're gonna talk about, in that it has a brass screw on the side, and you can really just stick your fingernail in there and turn that screw and adjust the declination very easily. It's not like you have to have this teeny tiny screwdriver to adjust declination. You can do it with pretty much anything, a multi-tool, your knife, your fingernail, whatever you got that's fairly flat will fit that brass screw 
to adjust the declination on this compass. Again, however, it's a more complicated compass to use. You have to understand what direction you're looking at the compass. You have to understand, you know, the compass is made to be leveled when it's being used. It doesn't have a movable bezel ring on it whatsoever. So it's a little more complicated to understand how to use, but it's much more accurate for things like survey work and mapping work. And that's the important thing to understand. So if you're not doing those type things, you really don't need this type of compass. And these type compasses can be very, very expensive. Uh, actually, a Brunton Transit compass like this one is about $350, $325 to get it on sale. You can find used M2 compasses like this one for about $75 on eBay. I happen to luck into this one on eBay, which is a civilian version of an M2 with 360 degrees on it, things like that. Very similar to the Brunton, except it's not in the leather case and it's not a Brunton compass. I lucked into this one for less than 100 bucks on eBay too. So you can get them if you want one and not break the bank to try to get it. That's the point, I guess, okay? So that's a transit compass. And again, that compass is made for doing very precise work, laying out property lines, doing survey work, calling for artillery, those type things that are, have to be very precise, that compass is for you. If you're not doing that, you don't need it. Save your money. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the classic Kamenga or military compass, all right? This compass is very easy to use, a very user-friendly compass. If you get the tritium version, it glows in the dark really, really well for like forever, 10 plus years. So the difference in this compass comes in when you are going to plug a bearing in or you've been given a bearing. So let's say you've taken a bearing off of a map on a route that you've planned. You're going to travel the individual legs and you're not aiming off in the distance at something. You know where you want to go. At that point, what you need to do is you need to rotate your body until the desired degree reading is at the top of your compass or in the travel direction that you plan to go. And then move the bezel ring so that that glow in the dark line is over the needle. And then you have needle in the doghouse. And then if you vary from that, it's going to move as well. This compass is very accurate. It glows in the dark, so it works really well if you have to move at night. Much better than any civilian version compass will work. Um, it's heavy duty, it's practically bomb proof. They're fairly expensive compared to other compasses. You're looking at probably the $80 range, $100 range, somewhere between 80 and 100, if you want the tritium version or the glow in the dark version of this thing. However, they are very, very accurate. Now, the problem with this compass is that you cannot adjust declination. Unlike this transit compass that we just talked about, or you could turn a screw on the housing, you cannot adjust declination on this compass. So if you have to adjust for declination because you're using a map with this compass and there's a declination diagram on your map that says, for example, that you have seven degrees of easterly declination, then you have to make up for that by adding or subtracting easterly or westerly from the degree reading on your compass while it's laying on the map or where you're going to travel to. So that can be a little bit confusing as well. You can't just make this compass match the map like you can with something that you can change declination on. So if that's going to confuse you or gonna be a point of, you know, you might screw this up when it really counts, then I would stay away from this compass. If you're using this compass without a map, then declination has no bearing whatsoever and it doesn't matter. And this is one of my favorite compasses to use if I'm doing what's called self mapping or palm mapping because it's very accurate, it's very good at night. It does have some disadvantages as well as this one when it comes to a survival tool. We'll talk about that as well when we talk about the next compass. Okay, the third type compass I wanna to talk to you about is just a base plate compass, all right? And this is the Sunto MC2. This is the one I recommend all of my students to get. This is the one I tell them to buy right off the bat, straight out of the gate. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Sunto MC2. You can get the global or non-global version. You don't want the quadrant version. You want the version with 360 degrees on the bezel ring. So this one works very similar. You have a mirror that you can tilt up and down. You have siding devices here, siding devices here, 
and a siding line that goes across the bottom of the compass here. So you can look straight through and you can hold this thing out as far as you can so that you reduce that sight window variance or margin for error. The further this thing is away from you, the smaller that margin for error becomes. If you get this thing way up on top of you like this, like you would a military compass, your margin for error is gonna be huge. You've got to reduce that window like you were doing full presentation on a pistol and get that thing out in front of you, okay? That's what you need to do with this. Now, this compass has a mirror, like we talked about. It has a movable bezel ring. It also has an inclinometer that you can measure angle, pitch, things like that, like you could with the transit compass. It doesn't have a level and things like that on it. It's not as complicated, and it only measures in degrees, not mils. However, there are lots of advantages to this compass. So let's talk about plugging a bearing with this compass. Very easy. All you need to do is put the bearing you intend to travel at the top of the compass by moving the bezel ring, hold it out in front of you and move your body until the needle's in a doghouse and you're on the bearing of travel. If you're shooting a bearing, you just aim it at what you're trying to travel to, look through your sight windows, whichever one you choose to use, tilt your mirror so you can see it, put the needle in the doghouse and boom, you're there. Now you just move, and if the needle comes out of the doghouse and you didn't leapfrog, then you're off your course. It's very, very simple. This compass is the most simple compass to use. It has measurement markers on it and things like that. It works really, really well with a map, and it does have adjustable declination if you're using it with a map. You just have to have a small screwdriver that comes with the compass if you don't have one. I carry one of my Swiss Army knife as well inside the corkscrew in my pocket. Then you can adjust your declination if you need to for the map that you are using. If you're not using a map, again, stay at zero and it makes no difference whatsoever. So why do I like this compass so well over the others? I carry them all. I'll be flat honest with you. I carry all of them because I like to be used to using different types of instruments. However, this is the one that I would recommend and this is the one I would carry if the chips were down because it's the best survival tool. Anything that you put in your pack has to be multifunctional, but it has to do whatever its main intended purpose is, it has to do that very, very well, okay? This MC2 does navigation very, very well. At the same time, it has a mirror so I can signal with it. Now, the Transit Compass has the same thing. This also has a magnifying glass, and it's powerful enough to light charred material in full sun to give me a fire starting device. I can use it for first aid. I can use the mirror for first aid. This compass is much more versatile in what I can do with it than any other compass that we've talked about so far. And it's also probably the easiest compass to learn with. Now, is it as bomb proof as a metal Kaminga compass? Probably not. Is it as bomb proof as a metal transit compass? Probably not. However, I've never seen one of these break. So this is definitely my go-to, the Sunto MC2. You're looking at about $75 for something like this. Buy once, cry once, okay? You're not gonna hurt this thing. Now, I wanna talk to you about one more compass real quick, and it's exactly the same style compass. And this one is made by Solba, all right? This one is not on my website, but it is in my Amazon store. This is a pocket base plate compass, all right? It's not much bigger than a button compass, but it's a hundred times better. If you're carrying a button compass to tell you general direction, you've got bigger problems and you probably shouldn't be in the woods. General direction is not that difficult to figure out. The reason you should be carrying a compass with you is to be able to walk a straight line and plug in exact travel bearings. And you can do that with this compass because it has a movable bezel ring with 360 degrees around it. It has a nice doghouse with two glow in the dark dots on it that glow in the dark very well. And it has a mirror with a siding device. And it even has a safety pin here so you can clip it to the outside if you want to. So you can wear it like this and read it as you're walking if you wanted to. This is a very good compass. Um, I've been carrying one of these for several years. This one is a Silva. I actually have a Brunton in my kit. This compass used to be made by, was made by Silva to begin with, then it was made by Brunton, now it's made by Silva again. I take that back. The one I have in my kit is an original Silva, 
But I do have some Bruntons that I got from a guy who worked for the Air Force uh, Pilot Training School. They were getting rid of them, and he had a few of them, and he sent them to me. And then these are brand new Silvas. These brand new Silvas work as good as the other ones do, as far as I can tell so far. Um, but I recommend this compass, and it's only about 25, 26 bucks as a backup compass. Keep this thing in your pocket, keep it in your kit. When you don't want to carry a full-size compass like this all the time with you, if you're just out on a short scout or something like that, I always have this thing in my bag as a backup, if nothing else. But a lot of times I'll use this and nothing else if I'm just going out with what's in my pockets. All right, guys, well, I apologize for you probably a 15 or 20 minute talking head video, uh, but it was a video that I thought needed to be done. Constantly, I get the question, which compass should I buy? What compass should I get? Uh, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I hope you're staying safe in these times of the COVID-19 crisis. We'll be starting back up with classes fairly shortly here at the school. I don't think we're going to cancel the June basic class. It's got like 25 people signed up for it, and I think we're going to go ahead and run that, and we'll see how things go from there. But right now, that's our plan. We canceled everything in May, but we're going to go back going full bore in June, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but that's my feeling right now as we speak. Guys, I appreciate everything you do for us, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.